need you to stop screaming because I can't understand what you're saying. Somebody just set a woman on fire, but she just ignited immediately. Okay, she's still on fire, sir? He just grabbed a uh, fire extinguisher from inside Speedway. She's on the ground. I mean, it was bad. In August of 2015, Judy Malinowski, former beauty queen and mother of two, had gotten into an argument with her boyfriend, Michael Slager, in front of a Speedway gas station in Columbus, Ohio. After tossing a cup at Slager during the argument, Slager returned the gesture by pouring gasoline on Judy before lighting her on fire. As a result of this barbaric attack, Judy suffered fourth and fifth degree burns on more than 80% of her body and lost two of her fingers and both ears which melted in the fire. Judy also sustained massive open wounds on her back and buttocks and dealt with constant pain daily from her hospital bed. Her children and mother were required to wear gowns and gloves while visiting Judy in the hospital. Hi, my mommy. During which time she underwent 50 surgeries. Doctors told Judy and her family that she would most likely not survive due to the severity of her injuries. Although Slager claimed the attack was an accident, he pleaded no contest to aggravated arson and received 11 years in prison. You've done all the things that just really show what a despicable individual you are. You really do seem like one of those people that have no soul and you need to be incarcerated. Judy, tell me, tell me, is today a good day? Tell me why today's a good day. It's light outside. So the sun comes up and you don't hurt as bad. That's a good day. How do you describe what you've been through? Horrible. No human should ever have to go through that. Nothing that breathes. Why do you want to talk to us today? Get out. Run. What keeps you going, Judy? Your girls? Her mother, Bonnie, believes it was Judy's love for her daughters that helped pull her out of months of unconsciousness. I went and got pictures of her little girls, and I taped them above her bed because I thought to myself, if she remotely wakes up out of this coma or knows anything of what's going on, or has any memory, the first thing I wanted to see is those two little girls. It proved to be true. I was thinking, if anything will motivate someone to live, a mom will motive, being a mother will motivate you to take care of those two little girls. Your mother told us there was a point when doctors said she should let you go. What do you feel about that? You're glad they didn't. Tell me why. You felt like you couldn't live like this anymore. so much pain. She wanted me to just let her go and I said no I'm not letting you go we fought too long and too hard and so that's when we said I had to take a step back with myself and say she's really in a lot of pain 
She's, she needs retraction surgery. She can't move her body. Am I being selfish? What conclusion have you come to about your future and, and what you want? You're going to fight. Six hundred and ninety-eight days after Michael Slager lit his girlfriend on fire, Judy succumbed to her injuries and died in the hospital. Hi, Judy. Hi. Okay, I'm going to start by asking you your name. Full name. Judith Ann Malinowski. And is Malinowski spelled M-A-L-I-N-O-W-S-K-I? That's correct. Is it okay if I call you Judy? Yes. And uh, Judy, is your birth date August 26, 1983? Yes. So you're 33 today. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I want uh, Tess to show you what's been previously marked as State's Exhibit EE1. Can you see that photograph? Hold on. Yes. Uh, is the, what is that photograph of? My senior picture. Okay. When you were 18 years old? Yes. Okay. Uh, and I want to take you back a little bit. Uh, to, to when you were 27 years old. Did you have a, a diagnosis and a, and a surgical procedure when you were 27 years old? Yes. And uh, was that for cervical cancer? Ovarian cancer. Okay, thank you. Uh, and uh, you had some complications as a result of that surgery, correct? Yes. Uh, and uh, tell me what happened as a result of those uh, complications from the surgery. I was placed on very strong painkillers, Oxycontin, uh, and Percocet. I got addicted to them. Then when I ran out of insurance and couldn't go back to the doctor to get the medicine, I, uh, my addiction turned into a uh, heroin addiction. Okay. Uh, and so uh, is it fair to say that you became an addict to uh, illegal drugs? Yes. Uh, and when did that begin? What age were you? About 28. Okay. Uh, is this an addiction that you battled for many years? Yes. Okay. I want to. Uh, I want uh, uh, test to show you uh, what's been marked as State's Exhibit EE2. Okay. Uh, can you tell me what that photograph is? It's a picture of me and the girls taking them to school on their first day. Okay. That's uh, your children, correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, and is this photograph from around Christmas, uh, or from uh, 2014, August 2014 then? So yeah. Okay. Uh, now, uh, do you know a man named Michael Slager? Yes. Uh, and uh, did you begin dating him in April 2015? Yes. Okay. Uh, I want to show you what's been previously marked as State's Exhibit DD1. Okay. Do you recognize the person depicted in that photograph? Yes, that's Mr. Slater. Okay, that's the man you started dating in April 2015. Yes. Okay. Um, I want to talk to you about uh, Sunday, August 2nd, 2015. Do you recall that day? August 2nd, 2015, yes, I do. Okay. Uh, and on that day, were you with Mr. Slager? Yes. And uh, where uh, where were you with him? Uh, well, we had went a couple places, but 
get to Brazil. He went after leaving the rehab center. And okay. Let's talk about that for a minute. After leaving the rehab center, we're talking about Parkside Drug Rehab? Yes. Okay. Uh, and uh, it was the plan to check you in there, correct? Yes. Uh, but you weren't ready to go. Is that fair to say? Fair. Did you have some things you wanted to do before you went? Yes. Uh, did those things include talking to your children that we saw earlier? Yes. And talking to your mother? Yes. And how about getting some cigarettes? Yes. Okay. Uh, you, you, you smoke cigarettes, correct? Yes. At least you did. I used to. <laughs> Uh, and uh, you smoke a particular brand, correct? Yes. What was that brand? My little black reds. Okay. Um, and you were out of them on August 2nd, 2015, correct? Yes. Uh, they let you smoke cigarettes in Parkside Rehab? Yes, they do. Okay. Uh, and so you needed to take some with you? Yes. So when you were with Mr. Slager, you indicated that the two of you stopped at Speedway. What, what did you stop there for? To get cigarettes. Did both of you go in to get cigarettes? Or did no. only... Who went in? He did. We were arguing back and forth. Either one of us were very happy with each other. Okay. And what did you do when he went in to Speedway to buy cigarettes? Well, he was extremely upset with me, so I tried to sneak out of the truck and around behind the Speedway building. Okay, and this is the Speedway at 376 Agler Road, right? Yes. So you, while he went inside, you got out of the truck and went behind that Speedway. There's a bank there, right? Yes. Uh, and uh, what happened as you uh, stood behind that Speedway? Um, Mike came in a matter of no time at all around in his truck. Uh, he saw me and immediately slammed the truck in the park, got out, demanded that I got into the truck with him, called me all sorts of names. Uh, we argued for a good five to ten minutes and then I threw my pop on him. You threw a pop he, on him? Yes. Uh, did you splash it on him or actually throw the cup at him? I threw the cup at him. Okay, and this cup, was it uh, a hard plastic or paper or what was it made out of? I believe it was a styrofoam cup. Okay. Um, uh, did the drink get on him? Yes. What was his reaction to this? He was extremely upset. And what did he do? He ran around to the other side of his truck and he got his uh, these kilos of gasoline that he had kept in the back of his truck. Uh, it was a really big and had a lot of gas. He ran around with me and started pouring gasoline, started up my head and worked his way down. Some got in my throat as he did that and uh, got burnt really bad. Gasoline in your throat burnt really bad? Yes. And uh, what, what happened as a result of having this gasoline poured on you? He then set me on fire. Well, let's slow down a little bit. Before that, uh, were, did you remain standing or were you standing when he poured the gasoline on you? No. When he poured the gasoline on you, were you standing? No. Go ahead and tell us what, how you were when, when he poured the gasoline on you. I fell down and I was leaning on my right side, holding myself with my right arm in here. Okay. So did you fall down as a result of that burning sensation from the gasoline? No. Okay. What caused you to fall down? I fell, well, I fell down completely the rest of the way. But I originally had fell down because I mean, he had pushed me through. I tripped when we, I was running from him. Okay, you tripped? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so 
Uh, when you trip and you're falling and, and you're laying there holding yourself up on one hand uh, and he's pouring gasoline on you, what's his demeanor as he's pouring the gasoline on you? Evil, just completely evil. He's not, he's not responding to any of my cries for help. He won't tell me why. He just, like, you want to throw something on some, or you want to throw a cop on me, see what I'll do to you, bitch. And how do you like this? And just all sorts of vulgar names. Okay. So Judy, was was this a joking demeanor? You poured something on me, I'm gonna no. pour something on you, ha ha, isn't this funny? No, it was an evil demeanor. Okay. Uh, and um, after he poured the gasoline on you, um, what happens next? He backed away from me for about 30 seconds and I kept telling him, so please help me and stop and I'll get I'll get the truck, I'll go with you. You know, um, why how did, why would you do this? And I looked at him and he pulled a lighter out of his pocket and he started walking towards me and I just remember crying and begging for help and he let me on fire and the look in his eyes were his eyes went back, literally, after I was set on fire, and he backed away. His eyes just turned black as I screamed for his help. Okay. And he did nothing. Okay. So this entire time, you're asking for help, uh, but did you make up with him in any no. way during these 30 seconds between him pouring gasoline on you and pulling out the lighter and setting you on fire? No. And uh, did you at any time produce a cigarette and ask for a light? No. Okay. As a matter of fact, did you have any cigarettes on you? No. Okay. Uh, before we get into that being lit on fire, I want you to look at uh, State's Exhibit D28. Okay. Do you recognize the items depicted in D28? Yes. Okay. Uh, whose items are those? They're mine. Uh, and uh, is it a bag full of clothing uh, and other items damaged by the fire, personal effects? Okay. I want to direct your uh, attention to what appears to be a cigarette uh, box. Do you recognize that cigarette box? Is that? Yes. Okay. On the right side of the picture? Yes. Okay. I'm going to show you D8 as well. Okay. That a close up of that cigarette box? Yes. Marlboro Blacks, right? Yes. Okay. Are there any cigarettes in that box? No. Okay. Uh, you didn't have any cigarettes, right? That's why you stopped to buy some. Right. Okay. I want to show you uh, State's Exhibit B-28. Okay. Tell me about what uh, State's Exhibit B-28 is. Uh, an empty cigarette pack with a black pipe in it. Okay. And whose is that? That is mine. Okay. So the only thing in that cigarette pack is your crack pipe. That's Fair correct. Said? No cigarettes, right? Right. Okay. Um, I'm going to show you State's Exhibit B-54. Okay. This is a cigarette found at the scene. Is that your cigarette? No. Do you have any idea where that cigarette came from? No. Okay. I'm going to show you State's Exhibit D-15. What is uh, Exhibit D-15? A lighter. Do you recognize that lighter? No. Okay. Uh, can you tell me anything about the lighter that you described Michael using? I can't remember the exact 
Okay. Don't know what color it was or whether it was a Zippo or a big plastic or metal, anything about it. I want to say I thought it was a Zippo, but I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, Judy, are you right or left-handed prior to this incident? I'm right-handed. Okay. Uh, and so when you smoke, which hand do you smoke with? Your right hand only. Okay. Uh, could you raise your right hand so that it's uh, up by your face so we can see it? Thank you. Can you raise your left hand, please? Okay. Thank you. Uh, Judy, uh, let's talk about the moment that you were set on fire. <coughs> Did you have a cigarette? No. Did you ask for a light? No. Did you make up with Michael in any way? No. Uh, and when he approached you with the lighter, what did he look like? Like Satan's child. Did he appear to be angry or like he compassionate, like he was making up with you? He appeared to be full of rage and yet calm at the same time. Uh, and uh, was his approaching you with that lighter accidental? Did he trip or anything like that? No. Okay. No. Judy, tell me how that moment felt when you were ignited. It felt horrible. I don't think words can describe what it feels like to have your whole body on fire. I can remember the fire out of my face and I. I can remember screaming for help. I can remember looking over and seeing him just standing there staring at me with the look in his face that was just like I keep saying over and over again, pure evil. Like there's no other words to describe it. My whole body felt like the worst burn you could ever feel in your life. Okay. And it stung, and it was like a thousand needles going in, a thousand hot needles penetrating my body. I, I guess that's the best way I can explain it. And I just remember, like I said, begging him to help, pleading for any help, trying to get the fire off of my face. Eventually, burying my face in the grass and walking around. And then um, I got to the point where I couldn't see anything and everybody's voices were sounding far away. I could tell there was definitely somebody around, but I couldn't hear them or make it out. I thought for sure I was dying. I just prayed to Jesus to please forgive me for my sins. and to take care of my children, and that was it. I blacked out, and I don't remember anything until I woke up in the hospital. And so, of course, can I just make sure if there's something else Mr. Craypants wanted to say with regard to your objection? Anything? No, okay. okay, that's fine. Uh, Judy, uh, so just to be clear, you don't remember who came to your aid? No. You don't remember uh, who extinguished you? No. Uh, you don't remember paramedics or firemen arriving or police officers? No, unfortunately, I don't. Okay. Uh, the next thing you remember is waking up in the hospital, is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Let's talk about your hospital experience. Um, are, uh, you've been hospitalized ever since this incident in various hospitals uh, around Columbus, correct? That's correct. Uh, do you know how many surgeries you've had? Over 50. Uh, and you're aware that uh, you have coded seven times, correct? Yes. Uh, can you tell me about the pain that you live with? I Objection. I live with pain every day. I, uh, I can't tell you or describe how it feels. It's just waking up is a horrible thing. You wake up feeling the same way every day. 
they say it gets a little better as time goes by, but it's one thing heals, another thing hurts. So I uh, had to push myself to make it through every day. I have to really tell myself why I'm doing this, and I have to, I have to just breathe through it. And uh, that's all I, that's all I can do. It's nothing I would ever wish upon anybody. And uh, it's terrifying to feel this way, and it's terrifying also to be disformed in certain ways. My whole body hurts, my muscles hurt, so from stretching, my open wounds hurt and sting and burn when they put the dressings on and try to clean them. It's the worst thing ever. Even water hurts. So there's nothing that's okay about this. Sorry, Judy. Okay. Um, you understand uh, the prognosis is not good, correct? No. Um, but you're fighting against it, right? Yes. I don't believe I have any other questions for the witness. I think Mr. Craypens may have some questions for you. Okay. Ms. Malinowski, can you see me? Yes, sir. Okay. My name is Bob Craypence. I don't. I believe we've never met or talked before, correct? Yes. I've organized some questions, and I hope to keep it to the point pretty quick. But if I skip around a little bit, I apologize. I don't mean to. If you have any questions, or you're not sure what I'm asking you, okay, please ask me to repeat it or rephrase it. Fair enough? Yes. Right. I want to start back with your initial relationship or your meeting of Mr. Slager, okay? I'm going to go back in history. Yeah. I'm sorry, I would like to begin by your initial contact with Michael Slager. Okay. okay. I believe that happened in 2007. Would that sound about right? Yeah. At that time, uh, Michael was had been injured in a car accident. You recall that? Um, I met him after that. Right. And he was staying uh, with a person named Melissa Pearsall. Do you recall that? Yes. And Melissa, how do you know Melissa? Um, she also has a child by my uh, daughter's father. Okay. Ron Malinowski, is that your husband? That's correct. Yes. Okay. And Melissa has a child by him, correct? Yes. Okay. I got you. Are you still currently married to Ron? Yes. And at that time, in 2007, did you and Michael Slager become friends? Um, I, I guess we were all kind of that quick together, yeah. Okay. okay. It was a group of us. And then, after a number of months, uh, I think you and, and Ron Malinowski had a falling out. Is that fair to say? He did not mean yes. And you found out about it? Through Mike. Through Mike. Okay. Yes. And after that point, you two, your relationship developed into a more physical relationship. Is that fair to say? Um, not really. Mike said that he had always had feelings for me and professed that he loved me, but he was also dating friends of mine and I was also pregnant. So no, there was nothing really physical other than maybe some cuddling or hugging. Okay. During the time, and shortly after that, so we're clear, Michael Slager went to prison, did he, did he not? 
before he went to prison. You and Michael and this little clique, uh, you were snorting Percocets and, and Oxycontins or Oxycodones, correct? Correct. And was this before or after your ovarian cancer? About the same time. But, but you had indicated that you started on pain pills as a result of the medical procedure you had. Yes. It would be more accurate to say you were already involved in using illicit and illegal drugs? It was definitely after that. Okay. So before ovarian cancer? It was after. All right. Fair enough. And then sometime in 2014, you reconnected with Mr. Slager. Is that correct? Yes. He sent me a message on Facebook. Well, did you not send a message to Miss Amy Wicks through Facebook trying to reach out to Mr. Slager? No, I, Mr. Slager reached out to me first. Okay. All right. At that time, he was dating someone named Michelle Strasberry. Is that correct? No, I did not talk to him. Michelle had already been deceased when, we, when, I, met, when I met up with Michael. She had died from a heroin overdose, was your understanding? Yeah. Uh, at that time, you were living up in New Albany, is that right? Yes, I was clean and I had my own apartment and I had my kids. Okay. Were you employed at that time? No, I was getting social security disability. Okay. And the nature of your disability, if I may ask? Um, well, the cancer and some other things. Can I, can I ask what the other things are? Um, just some mental problems that I was battling from my past. And was your income from Social Security disability sufficient to pay the rent and the food and everything at that apartment? Um, it covered the rent and a little, a little bit of, or maybe a little bit of the utilities. My mom helped out the rest. In March of 2015, you okay? I'm sorry. Just okay. In, I'm going to move to March of 2015. Okay. Uh, paramedics were called to your apartment, is that correct? Yeah. And was that a result of you having a bad reaction to some drugs that you had taken? No, it was a result of my calling my mom, telling him telling her that he wouldn't, I wouldn't open the door for him and he was afraid I was going to commit suicide. And I wasn't opening the door for him because we were fighting horrible. The minute I went on a first date with Michael, he never left my house after that or my side. Okay. So it's, it's your it's, time, it's, just, I apologize, Ms. Malinowski, I just want to make sure I understand this correctly. So. The paramedics did, did or did not treat you for what appeared to be an overdose of drugs at that time. Objection. Okay. And it was Michael who called the paramedics, was it not? Mike or my mom, one or the other. Were you passed out at that time in the bathroom? No. Huh. From March of 2005, he made up trying to get into my house. Okay. Did you use heroin after March of 2015? Yeah, thanks to Mike. He's the one that got it for me the first time. Okay. Did you start stealing money from Mike? No. Mike gave you money? Mike bought. He got it for me every day. He would bring home a gram of heroin. My question is, you stole money from Mike, correct? No, I didn't. Did you steal property or, or money from your mother? I was asked, yes. 
And, and about this time, did your mom become aware of your heroin use? Yes. Objection. And did she cut you off financially? Objection. Yes. And as a result, um, go ahead. I'm sorry. She cut me off when when she came over and found Mike in the house, which was before the drugs. Huh? Did you start running the streets, doing some panhandling to get money for your hair? Every now and then, yes. Did you involve yourself in other illegal activities in order to get money other than no. panhandling? No. And this is a time when you were still actively using drugs. Is that fair to say? Yes. And when you use drugs, you, you do acts or you commit acts that are not in your nature normally, is that fair? Yes. And you become loud and, and violent at times, yes? Well, I am violent. I've never had a violent nature. And, and Michael called the police in May, I think May 29th of 2015 because of your behavior. Right, and so did I. I called the police and told them Michael was going to kill me and I needed help. Okay, what? That point, that's why I hadn't brought the car home. Okay. But the detective did nothing about it, so here I am. I want to talk a little bit more. Did you ever take the televisions that Michael provided and either pawn them or sell them for money for drugs? What? One that was his that he bought to replace the TV of mine that he broke. Okay. And where did you sell that? I'm not sure. I speak to a friend. Okay. I want to talk a little bit about your physical condition back then. Okay. At the time that you were doing drugs, heroin, you were also doing crack cocaine, correct? Yes, every now and then. Were you active on Facebook at or about this time, June and July of 2015? I'm sorry, say again. Hey, I'm sorry. Were you active on Facebook during this period of time of your multiple hospitalizations? Sometimes, but sometimes not. On Facebook? On and off. Okay. And on Facebook, did you refer to Michael Slager as your husband? As my husband? Yes. Um, I don't remember me in a joking manner. I said, my hubby. Well, certainly not in a mean spirited way. No. In the summer of 2015, did you attempt to seek help for your drug addiction? Yes. And did Mr. Slager and your mom and you discuss going to either Parkside or some other place for, for rehabilitation? And, and I was on my way to Parkside when all this happened. Uh, I went. Ms. 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 Malinowski, I'm going to ask just kind of specific questions. I apologize for interrupting you. But, but okay. I want to make sure that we're clear. And that's why I'm going to ask very, hopefully, short questions, OK? Go ahead. Thank you. There was a time that Mr. Slager took you to Parkside, did all the paperwork, and then had to sit in the lobby for several hours. Is that right? Yeah. Excuse me, for one moment, you're on, man. Oh, yeah, you are. I'm, I'm reading it right here. Ms. Malinowski, I apologize. Uh, what I'm talking about is Talbot House, and I, I jump to the, the next one. At Talbot House, did you attempt to go to rehab there? Where? Talbot House. Uh, uh, yeah, I tried. And after sitting there for half an hour, after doing all the paperwork, you up and ran out. Was that? And then I discussed it. And he said that he'd rather me just go to Cincinnati with him, and we would bring myself down, and he would. Let me some and take it with us, and he just went 
do a lower dose every day. Okay, so he was with you at Talbot House trying to get you into rehab? He was with me at Talbot, and he wanted me to go with him to Cincinnati. So he was waiting to see if I was going to go to Cincinnati or go to Talbot. How did you get to Talbot House on that occasion? So even though he wanted you to go to Cincinnati, he took you to Talbot House, is that correct? Yes. Yeah, helped you fill out all the paperwork to get admitted? I didn't fill out any paperwork. Just sat there? I gave him my name to have my information from a while ago. You're talking about the people at Talbot House, you gave them that information? Yes. Okay, I got you, I got you. But then you left. So noted. And at Talbot House, you were not allowed to smoke. Is that correct? Do you recall that? Right. Okay. And that's one of the reasons you decided not to go to Talbot House is because you weren't able to get to your cigarettes. That's correct. And because I talked to um, Percy, and they were going to take me anyway. Okay. In a couple of days, I just had to wait for the following week. And it's a longer program. And I can smoke there. And I had been there before and I liked it. And I was successful until my key record so they At this time, were you taking Suboxone? At what time? At the time that you had entered and then left Talbot House. When I left Talbot Hall. Right, Talbot Hall, excuse me. Yeah, were you, were you taking Suboxone, let's call it the summer of 2015? At one point, then, yes. Was that prescribed to you? Yes. And can I ask who prescribed it? Uh, Dr. Valentine. And were you able to afford that prescription? I'm sorry? Were you able to afford that prescription of Suboxone? Um, it was very expensive. We could get some. Sometimes I could afford the whole thing. Spalinowski, uh, Michael Slager worked at the construction industry, correct? Yes. And he had a job that was waiting for him down in Dayton. Do you recall that? No. And he took, let me ask you this, he had a crew of people working for him, did he not? I wouldn't call one person a crew. Huh? So you're, you're indicating he had one person working for him, not 10 or 12 people working for him. That's correct. He had a guy that he was partnered with, and then a, a Mexican that he treated horrible and paid way under minimum wage. Did you go with, with Mr. Slager to a job site that was outside of the Columbus area? Yes, one down in Cincinnati. Okay, you, you believe that was in Cincinnati? Yes. And you would stay with him for two or three days at a time and then come back to Columbus? Yes. Sometime in July 2015, uh, did Mr. Slager find you at a hotel room on Bryce Road? I don't believe that was July, that was in June. Okay. And uh, yes, he did. And that was a result of you running away for five or six days and having no contact with any family or, or Michael or any, anybody, right? Right. Well, as soon as I had contact with family, they told him where I was. And and the reason and he would have been hitting me, beating me, and was horrible. I was trying to get away from him, and I couldn't. This is before you went down to Cincinnati with him for multiple days at a time, correct? No, that's after. Okay. All right. So we're clear. And in that hotel room, you were shooting up dope, correct? I'm sorry. Shooting up dope in that hotel room on Bryce Road? Not the whole time, no. Right. Your continued drug use over the period of that summer, did that affect you physically? Yes. When you get addicted and then you try to stop, you get what's called dope sick. Is that fair? 
Correct. Messes with your whole system. You start vomiting and diarrhea, dehydration. That's correct. It also messes with or affects your ability to think clearly. Is that fair to say? Something. Right, but your thought process has changed somewhat. You start doing things you otherwise wouldn't do to avoid that being dope sick. Okay. Michael never did heroin, to your knowledge, did he? No. At some point, your mother refused to renew the lease in your apartment. Isn't that true? Yes. Now, as a result of the fact that you were still doing drugs, despite the fact that she didn't want you to do drugs, she knew about your drug use. Is that true? Yes. You had tried to hide it from her for some period of time, but she found out. Yes. She essentially cut you off again and said, I'm not going to renew your lease. You're going to get inpatient treatment, right? Yes. And what happened to all your furniture and property in the in your apartment? Into what? All the, the stuff in your apartment. Well, first off, everything in my apartment belonged to me, and it was all put in the storage unit. Who put and it in the storage? It's Michael. Michael. Michael, Michael put Michael. it. Michael. Go ahead. I apologize. I'm, I'm. I just want to be clear. Michael's the one that put this stuff in the storage unit, correct? That's correct. Can you say that? And that was at the request of you and your mom. Objection. You put my mom. Okay. Your mom asked Mr. Slager to assist you in moving your things out. Is that fair to say? Yeah, but I wouldn't put me on my at that time. I was trying to avoid him at all costs. All right, well, let me ask you about that. On August 1st, this would be the night before August 2nd, okay, um, you and Mr. Slager got into an argument about your drug use, the amount of money he was spending on you so you didn't get dope sick, things along that line, correct? Yeah. You have a mutual friend named Andy, do you not? Yes. And you texted Andy on August the 1st saying that you did not want Mr. Slager to leave you and that you loved him. Isn't that true? No. So if, if that text or if Andy testifies to that text or we produce that text, that's a lie. Is that correct? I do not believe that I sent that text to August Andy. I had asked Andy not to tell Mike where I was. So are you saying I never texted Andy saying I love Michael Slager and I don't want him to leave me? Not at the end of our relationship, no. When is it you believe you sent that text? I mean, I probably said that I love Michael. Lots of times, but... Uh, when would be the most recent time before August 1st that you would have sent that text? I don't know. I don't believe I ever sent a text saying that I don't want him to leave me. Because I never thought he would leave. I wanted him to leave. I was definitely, oh, he used me for a place to live and that's the company to take out his whatever on and for, I apologize for interrupting. You know, I, I was definitely, I'd like to ask you some questions about August 2nd, the day of this offense, okay? Okay. Um, you found out that there was a bed available for you at Parkside that day, is that correct? Yes. And you were staying at the La Quinta Hotel, I think, on Bryce Road at that time? I, that might be, I'm not sure which hotel we were at. 
You stayed at several different hotels once you could not go back to your apartment. And you called Michael to say there's a bed available at Parkside. Yes. And he came and picked you up. Correct? He was with me. Okay. So your recollection is he was actually with you when you found out that there was a bed available? Yes. He took you to Walmart. Yes. No. Bought you some makeup, some hygiene products, things like that? No. Did he take you to Burlington Coat Factory to get some clothes? No. Did he take you to a thrift store to find the stretchy pants that you were looking for? Not that day, no. You had said on direct examination you went to several places. First, what? When Mr. Edwards was questioning you, you said you went several places before you went to Parkside. Where did you go? I went to the thrift store. There I did go. But I had to steal half my clothes. And he went by his mom, and I got out of the truck and started walking because his whole family hates me. And that's when I, I started. His mom lives right down the street from that speedway. Ma'am, I'm just trying to figure out what happened that morning of August 2nd, okay? Okay. So he, he left you after you found out there was a bed for Parkside. He left you, correct? He took me to Parkside. But, but you said you went other places first. I'm trying to find out where you went. We went to the thrift store. We drove around. We went and met my dope boy. You picked up dope on your trip to Parkside? Yes. Huh? yes. And in fact, Objection. he went in and got it for me. Michael dropped you off at Parkside, correct? Yes. And he drove away. I didn't want to go yet until I had met with my mom and kids. And my mom had packed me a bag of clothes and hygiene products. Let, just, just so I understand the kind of order of what happened, okay, Ms. Malinowski? He dropped you off at Parkside and he drove away, correct? He didn't drive away. He drove, he turned on the next street and turned around. Okay. He left the parking lot and then turned around and came back into the parking lot. Is that fair? That's fair. Okay. And at that point, you were leaving Parkside. I never went in. Okay. You, you pretended like you were going in, and then when he left the parking lot, you. And like I was going in. I stood there and smoked a cigarette. So you had a cigarette at that point? I bummed one off with somebody that was outside smoking. So somebody else outside smoking, and you bummed a cigarette from them? Yes. And then you started leaving the facility with the purpose of purchasing cigarettes? Or just and because. Might Pull back, pull it, my pull back what was your purpose of leaving, Ms. Malinowski? I apologize. Why were you leaving Parkside? With my mom. Okay, so you weren't, wasn't about the cigarettes. No, but I was going to get cigarettes too. My mom would have bought them. Okay. Mr. Cravens, can you give her a second to take a drink at least? Yeah, of course. Take okay. your time. Do you need to take a drink, ma'am? Thank you. Go right ahead. Okay, thank you. You got back in his truck, correct? Yes. And then you went to the speedway. Yes. And, when he went, and, and the reason is, at Parkside, you're not allowed to bring in open packets of cigarettes, are you? That's correct. They've got to be sealed and closed to make sure that you haven't hidden things like crack pipes or whatever inside those packs. That's correct. Right, so you needed brand new packs of cigarettes. Otherwise, they wouldn't let you have any cigarettes in. Yes. And the idea of stopping at Speedway was so he can get a pack for himself and a pack for you. Right? Yes. Okay. And you both smoked the Marlboro Black 100s? Yes, but he smokes menthol and I smoke none. I see. And when you don't get menthol, are you a, I hate to say brand loyal, but is it menthol or nothing or menthol or whatever I have? What? You only smoke menthol, or on occasion do you smoke non-menthol cigarettes? No, I don't smoke menthol at all. Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. Oh. I'm sorry, Ms. Malinsky. I confuse it. 
Okay. If there's nothing to smoke or menthol, are you going to choose nothing or menthol? After a period of time, I might break down and smoke a menthol cigarette or a couple of hits of it. You got out of the truck at the speedway and you went behind the building, is that correct? That's correct. And Michael found you there and you were getting ready to shoot up some dope. Is that fair? No, it wasn't. Uh, had you already done the dope that you said you bought that morning? Yeah. And where did you do that? Um, he took me to a bathroom somewhere and I got I did there. Where? I don't know. I'm sure it was a fast food restaurant or something. Uh, so at this time, when everything happens, you're high on on what? What? What what kind of dope did you do? I, I did heroin. You also had perks that day, did you not? Percocets. I don't think so. What about crack cocaine that day? I didn't have any crack cocaine. I had a fight with no crack cocaine. All right. Okay. I don't mean to embarrass you, but I want to talk about an incident in which you lost some hair off of your head prior to August the 2nd. You know what I'm talking about? Um, go ahead and remind me. Sure. Did you have some kind of extensions or something that you wore on, on your head yes. in place of hair? And, and yes. And explain exactly, if you can, what those extensions are for and what they're made of. They're made of real hair and they're for to make your hair look thicker and longer and, and stuff like that. Okay. And sure understand they're made of real hair and they're just kind of twisted into your existing hair or how are they applied? They can be braided and sewn in or they can be Oh, and, oh. Oh. I have mine done both ways, along with blue. Blue? Yes. Did you have to apply this, this hair because of an injury or some kind of trauma that you had to your existing hair? Uh, well, I have Mike's partner's wife use this glue on my hair to put the extensions in. Uh, Ma'am, I apologize for interrupting, Ms. Malinowski. Why did you have to have this done at all? I had had tiny bald spots from a previous relationship. Okay. Is it not true that you burned your hair while doing uh, crack cocaine? Every now and then I would singe it in the lighter, some of it, but never burst the scalp, ever. Can you, can you tell us what you were wearing that morning of August the 2nd? I don't remember. Okay. You remember getting dressed that morning? No, I don't. You don't remember what, where you went to do drugs, but you knew it was a bathroom of some kind, correct? I've been through so much there, unfortunately. I don't remember a lot of things, but it was good. Uh, be fair to say that the trauma you've suffered has affected your memory? Yes. Say that it has affected your ability to recall events accurately? I'm very request for great class. Would you agree that because of the trauma that you have suffered, your ability to recall events accurately has been compromised. My ability to what? Recall events. Remember things. I, I can recall the events, but the many details of them. It's hard for me to recall 
You have to understand when I was second, I was set on fire, thrown from the ground, and burnt 95% of my body. I understand. What what I'm trying to get to really is to try to keep track of everything that happened okay. in this horrible relationship. I appreciate that. I'm gonna, uh, ma'am, I'm going to ask some specific questions about that then, okay? And I'll try to keep them to yes, no questions if it makes it easier. In preparation for your testimony today, have you met with somebody from the prosecutor's office? I haven't met with anybody from the prosecutor's office in preparation for today. <laughs> Today, no. Not, I don't mean me today, Ms. Malinowski. I mean in the past. Has anybody reviewed with you your testimony? No, they've just told me that what the testimony is about, what I think, um, you know, that why we're doing it, and that's about it. Let, let me ask this. You were shown some pictures today during the direct examination. Yes. Had you seen those pictures before? Um, I've seen those pictures of myself many a times. Uh -huh. I've never seen that picture of Mike before, no. i never seen that picture of the secret back. What? Until today. But, I mean, the pictures of me and my girls, yeah, the picture. Of me in my senior year, yes, I've seen all the pictures. Okay. Did you talk with members of the police department at the hospital immediately after this event? I think they woke me up long enough to ask me who did this to me, and I said, Michael Sider. Okay, so that's your memory of the conversation that you had, or is that something somebody told you? That's the memory of what I remember. Okay. So your memory is that they woke you up? So you, they asked you who did this to you, and you said Michael Slager. Yes, and I was in the extreme that he had a lot of pain, and they put me back to sleep. I understand. Would you say that your memory of that conversation is as accurate as your memory of the whole event? I mean, for the most part, yeah. You, you were given some, some medication relatively quickly at your hospital stay. Are you aware of that? Did you know that? Did somebody tell you? Or? I'm sure that I would have had to be. But you don't have an independent memory of that yourself. Is that fair? Yeah. Do you recall wearing a hoodie that day? A hoodie? Hoodie. Yeah, hoodie. I would wear a hoodie a lot of times. Do you recall that you wore one on August 2nd? I don't remember if I had a hoodie on or not. Talked about an argument that you and Michael had on the way to the Speedway, correct? What about it? You, you mentioned you had an argument. I'm just trying to give you a starting point for my next few questions, okay? And at some point, you either threw a pop or spilled a pop on him, correct? That was after he went into the gas station, and I had ran behind the gas station, and he had insisted that I get in his truck, and he was very upset. And I know when he's angry like that, that I'm going to get hurt. Ms. Malinowski, and, I apologize for interrupting. My question is, did you pour something or throw something on him? That's my only question. When I went, after we had went behind the building, Okay. And was yelling at me, yes, I threw a pop at it. Ms. Malinowski? Yes. Okay. And I apologize again. I'm just trying to make this as simple and clear as possible. So if I ask if something happened, I'm not asking when, I'm just please answer yes it happened or no it didn't so I, my notes are clear. Now, You threw a pop on him of some kind, correct? Or something like that. Is that fair to say? I threw a pop on him, yes. Okay. All right. All right. And were you standing or seated in the truck? Where were you when this happened? I was standing in the grass. And where was, where was Michael? Standing probably five feet in front of me. 
But so he was a black cop. So he was not in his truck at the time. No. And the pop didn't get all over the front seat of his truck or anything like that, correct? No. And then once he did that, or once I apologize, once you splashed him, your testimony then he immediately grabbed a container that contains some gas from the back of his truck. Is that correct? That's correct. And he proceeded to doubt you starting, I think you said, from the head on down. Is that That's right? correct. And you stayed there. You just stood there or were you laying there? Or tell me what your position was. Uh, I was but from sitting to laying really fast and so would you, and I apologize for interrupting, just one clear. So the very moment he was pouring gas on you, you had already sat down. Is that fair? I had tripped. So, oh, okay, I apologize. But you were on the ground before yes. gas ever touched you, correct? Yes. Okay. And you never stood back up from that grass or that ground again, correct? When he walked away from you for the 30 seconds, that you remember? Yeah, too fast. No, I didn't. Mike, here's I think my, I'm having an issue with my shoes. Here's here's my question, and I apologize. When he walked away for the thirty seconds that you testified about, you didn't walk anywhere. You just sat in one spot. Is that your recollection? Yes, I was trying to gather up my. Stuff, and I had an issue with my shoes, I was understand. In fact, when this gasoline got on your on your top garment, which I believe to be a hoodie, do you recall that you took that off? Took the hoodie off? I took the hoodie off. Well, I'm asking if you remember that. No, I don't. Okay. And where was your backpack at the time, your, your pack of belongings? It was down behind me. Okay. You said about 30 seconds passed and then he came back. Was that true? Yes. And at that point, did you try to run anywhere? After he came back, as he was approaching, now I wanted to get the gasoline off me. I said I would get in the truck. I told him why would he do this? And Miss Malinowski, when you were trying to get the gasoline off you, how did you attempt to get the gasoline off of you? Did you remove articles of clothing? Clothing? Did you wipe your face? What did you do to get the gas off of you? I think I did remove my, you know, my jacket or something. Okay. And I remember just looking at him and he, he was starting with me and then he would, it happened so quick, you don't understand how quick 30 seconds is okay. when you're in a moment like that. Okay. And let me, let me just ask a couple quick questions. I'm almost done. Okay. You all right? Yeah. Okay. You're doing great. Um, you saw him walking towards you, and, and I think you said he had evil on his face at that time, correct? I'm sorry. Yeah, you saw yes. him walking toward you, right? Yes. With an evil look. Yes. And you did not get up and run away, correct? I, I couldn't. I remember there was a problem with my foot or my shoe. Uh huh? There was a problem with my foot or my shoes. I remember that. All right. Uh, as far as the lighter, the lighter was in Mr. Slager's pocket. Is that correct? I'm sorry? The lighter that you testified to. You said he pulled it from his pocket. Yes? I thought that he got it out of the truck, but maybe he got it out of his pocket. Fair to say that your memory about that isn't clear? Yes. In fact, I think you said you thought it was a Zippo. He turned around. My question is, did you say you thought it was a Zippo? 
I don't think it was. Did you ever say to somebody that you thought I it was? Of the letter is very unclear. Okay, fair enough. May I have just one more? Yes, go right ahead. Is he there? Just, just a minute, ma'am. We're, we're figuring out whether there's additional questions to be asked. All right. Thank you, Your Honor. Ms. Melanowski, I appreciate your patience. I don't have any further questions for you. Thank you.